HBO's House of the Dragon is unquestionably a hit, although its visuals could have been better for sure. Do you want to take a look at some of the most cringeworthy scenes in which the CGI failed the crew? And speaking of House of the Dragon, almost everyone on the show is notoriously morally gray. Each of the characters has a fatal flaw, and that's what makes the series more interesting to watch. What characters should or shouldn't we root for, and why? Well, let's find out all about that in this video. Let's dive into it, shall we? Did the Dragon Riders look alright with all the CGI? CGI. Even though the majority of fans praise the depiction of dragons in the show, it looks like House of the Dragon has trouble with scenes when the writers are also involved. They still have the same issue as Game of Thrones in that whenever a close-up of a person on the back of a dragon is shown, it looks like they're in front of the worst green screen ever. Otherwise, the dragons and riders look fantastic until we get close. Fortunately, House of the Dragon has an entirely new season ahead of it to correct mistakes and ensure that CGI looks realistic all of the time. Not just during enormous dragon moments. The deer killed by Viserys had bad CGI. Apparently, a lot of effort went into creating the actual dragons, leaving little money to invest in other animals. There are power men should never have trifled with. The deer Viserys killed during the hunt looked like it was from a video game. People complain about how phony things appear, while that deer couldn't really let fans pay attention in that scene because it was so bad. Who is most obviously a morally gray character on the show? Perhaps the most obvious example is the portrayal of the current king, Viserys the First Targaryen, played by Paddy Considine. Viserys appears to be another problematic leader when he first appears, no better than his Game of Thrones descendant of the same name. In the first episode, consumed by his desire for his son to serve as a direct male heir. He instructs his medical staff to put his wife through a treatment meant to save the child during her complicated labor, even though it could very well kill her, which it does, without saving the baby. However, the other episodes have earned the character sympathy and pity, if not affection. He demonstrated moral fortitude by refusing to marry the 12-year-old Lena Valerian, even though it would have been the most politically strategic move he could make at the time. And he has refused to break his promise to his daughter Rhaenyra that she will be his heir despite political pressure from multiple fronts. But just when you think you're starting to like him, there's a flashback to that heinous first sin. This is how it is with all of the major characters on the show, who all have some fatal flaw or another that prevents them from being fully loyal or capable of leadership. How does King Viserys' character develop? King Viserys began as one of the least popular characters in House of the Dragon, but grew in popularity as the series progressed. But is that fair? House Targaryen is not exactly an example of a decent family with good values. Values, but some of their actions are still a source of contention among fans a month after the first season ended. Take, for example, King Viserys Targaryen. For some reason, fans were willing to forgive him for essentially approving his wife's murder and marrying his daughter's adolescent best friend. Probably it was because of how Viserys himself understood that he was not a great king and doubted whether he was a good father and a good husband as well. What are the reasons behind people not supporting Viserys? It turns out that a sizable portion of the House of the Dragon fan is unwilling to defend Viserys. On the contrary, people seem to be increasingly not okay with Viserys, arguing that he forced Allison to bear his children only to ignore them later in favor of his Westeros Lego set. Some fans have even said that Viserys is an old pervert who sacrificed the stability of the kingdom to have s with a teenager. Others argue that because marital and forced marriage were common in medieval times and thus in Westeros, Viserys should not be judged for it. However, there are numerous other sins for which House of the Dragon fans are ready to condemn Viserys. The fact that Viserys continued to try to have a son after naming Rhaenyra his heir proves Viserys to be a misogynist to many fans, regardless of whether it was or wasn't common practice in Westeros. It was gross and wrong, regardless of whether it was the norm at the time. Even those who admire Viserys as a character cannot deny that the dragon dance is entirely his fault. Even though Viserys was on the verge of death, the way he ruined his efforts to make peace between Allison and Rhaenyra in the final episodes was extremely frustrating to many fans. What characters stand morally correct up till now? Rhaenyra and her former friend Allison Hightower are the most sympathetic of the series' main characters thus far. Because of their genders, both are exploited and denigrated, becoming pawns for their fathers, among other things. Rhaenyra is influenced by her uncle Damon for many years until he seduces her 
her in episode four before abandoning her in a brothel. Allison is sent by her father, Otto, to console the king following the death of his first wife, prompting the much older man to marry her and father several children with her. These mistreatments, as well as their personalities, endear the characters to the audience, but both can only be seen as good potential leaders if viewed through the warped lens of Westeros. Both are intelligent, but while they occasionally demonstrate thoughtful insight into the actual governing of the Seven Kingdoms, they only do so to benefit their respective sides in the brewing civil war over leadership, which has consumed them both by the most recent episode, in which their friendship has completely dissolved into an icy feud over whose children will rule. By modern standards, their respective claims to the throne, as well as the concept of Targaryen rule in general, are also extremely antiquated. Whether one believes that any monarchy is righteous or not, the Targaryen dynasty is built on a shaky and immoral foundation of might making right. Because of their bloodline's connection to old Valyria, the Targaryens and their relatives, the Valerians, believe they are higher people with the divine right to rule. This type of thinking, that genetics can make one superior to others, is what leads to horrors like racism, eugenics, and, as Martin's world frequently demonstrates, incest. What are Rhaenyra and her friend Alicent's claims? Rhaenyra's claim is based solely on the fact that she is the king's Targaryen daughter and a dragon rider. Alicent's only claim to fame is that she is the king's wife and the mother of his children. Both are completely rooted in a flawed system, and their respective lack of ideology and concern for the people they would govern highlight why, despite their difficulties, they do not deserve to sit on the throne. Everyone knows how their descendant Daenerys turned out, but even she did more to earn the loyalty of her followers because of her early successes in confronting sexism and slavery. All of this points to the fact that, from a modern standpoint, the answer to the question of whether we should cheer for one side or the other while watching House of the Dragon is a resounding no. However, doing so is part of the fun of the show, and viewers should not be forced to refrain from doing so. So, the real answer is that we should cheer for whoever we want, as long as we remember that the mindset we adopt when doing so is a distorted one that should not be followed in reality. Did Rhaenyra plot against another character on the show? In Driftmark, Rhaenyra and Daemon plotted to get rid of Sir Leonard Valerian through his lover, Sir Carl Corey, almost immediately after his sister's death. Leonard may have sailed away unscathed, but neither of them is likely to appear on the show again. Leonard was a good father to Rhaenyra's children, and he tried to fulfill his responsibilities to the realm. He did nothing wrong other than oppose an incestuous marriage that would strengthen Rhaenyra's claim to the Iron Throne. He's effectively gone now. Will this turn more Daemon fans against him? With each new scheme, his misdeeds pile up, making him harder to like. Even after he murders his wife, Lady Rhea, in Episode 5, he still has a certain segment of the audience on his side. The scene cut away before we saw him respond to her taunt to finish the job when he confronted the bronze bitch in the veil. Would it have mattered if he'd done it on camera? Later in the episode, Sir Kristen Cole bludgeons Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth to death, mirroring that incident. Yikes! What do you guys think that the worst CGI moments were? And do you agree that the king is an evil character? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!